talking tunes, and we're here with the the one, the only, the boatman, Chris Chris Craft, and uh, everybody everybody knows you, man. Muskegon, Ludington. I think you're uh, you're famous in Florida and uh, all kinds of places all around the world, aren't you? I don't know about that, but uh, that's the rumor. <laughs> it's the rumor. That's, that's the right. Rumor. Um, yeah. Now, you guys. Now, when you're on online, are you online too? As far as your uh, your station? No. No. Okay. All right. So, so I do a little thing. I do a little thing on Facebook every once in a while. Yeah. Just to promote the radio show. Yeah. On my own Facebook page, but and our station has a Facebook page too. But uh, yeah. So no, we can- don't stream. Per se, you could promote that if you'd like. So go ahead. And of we course, don't, we don't. We really don't. I don't promote it really, other than you know, it's my personal Facebook page. So no, but I'm saying you want to be my friend on Facebook. You're on K Rock, right? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, there you go. Which is a great yep. station in, in Lennington. I actually worked there for a minute. Okay. I think it was about maybe maybe two minutes. I worked there. We we hear traffic going by because I'm out my outside studio here. So there's like a big okay. truck that just rolled by. Yeah, I have that problem too at my studio. These guys drive by with their big semi trucks and they hit their Jake brake and sounds like that too. It's really annoying when you're trying to record. But you know, we we move on. That's right. You do what you got to do. Um, so do you still do the air traffic control too while you're there? No. Oh, you stopped. No, that? I uh, I had to I had to uh, give up my FAA tra- air traffic control license <laughs> due to uh, um, the lack of air traffic. You know, with all the uh, yeah. with with all the stuff that's been going on, they really don't have many flights coming into Ludington these days. So yeah, I noticed Muskegon's Muskegon's airport was a little bit uh, shy of things going on there too. So, but of course, I hey, was downsized, this- as they say. Yeah. This is definitely a great a great time to get uh, get some deals on some tickets. That's for sure. I mean, you know, twenty nine dollars get you a round ticket to Florida. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But it, it, if you go there, I mean, what can you do in Florida? Is Disney open? I don't think no, so. nothing's open. No. <laughs> yeah, so you can you can go. You can make, I don't even think you can go for a ride in the Everglades on one of them airboats. Yeah, I did that. So, that was uh, awesome. That was awesome. I did that with uh, Terry and I. My wife and I did that. Did. Uh, well, that was a great time. So yeah, I, maybe you could do that. I don't know. Of course, then you got to be six foot away from the driver. So I don't know. Yeah, that could be difficult. Yeah. Anyway, especially you know if you got to sure. be too close to the gators. Yeah, that could be a problem. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not liking the gators. So you know this this whole uh, pandemic that's going on now. Um, how how have you been dealing with uh, with the uh, maintaining the the your your body i guess you know because you know you and i aren't exactly the in the top shape yeah. that we should be at probably so right well i'm uh i'm no doctor and i i don't i don't generally dispense medical advice but i am a type 2 diabetic with high blood pressure and uh also high cholesterol so basically what i've been doing is drinking a lot of bush beer uh <laughs> Every morning, which just moments ago, I finished my daily morning bowl of oatmeal because I was told that it helps with diabetes and your high blood sugar. And, of course, that bush beer lowers your blood sugar. So there you go. And they, it balances out. It's all about balance. That's Oscar, right. Really. I mean, you have to balance the good with the bad, you know. Yeah. All things in moderation, they say. So. I have a bowl of oatmeal in the morning and about six beers at night. In between, I do whatever I want. Yeah, like, I call that the boatman diet plan. Like, of course, the the pizza over at uh, Chuck Wagon. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's once a week. Yeah, at that's least. actually uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday's pizza day. So, I'll be calling Rick over at uh, Chuck Wagon later on tonight. Tonight, when I get home from work and order up a fourteen inch super. And uh, that'll feed me a 14-inch pizza from Chuck Wagon will feed me for three days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's like 10 bucks a meal. It's, it's very affordable. Um, and on, on that super, you got the mushrooms, the onions, the pepper, the everything, everything, basically. Yeah, it's basically, you know, everything on there. 
um, heavy on the mushrooms, which I like. But uh, we're not doing a commercial for Chuck Wagon right now, are we? No, no. Okay. But yeah, it just I just one of the places. Well, yeah, uh, that's it's my favorite pizza of all time. That's been so going you know, on. I, I, I've never tasted pizza like that before. So, I mean, I've had well, some good better. pizza, but that's good pizza. Yeah, yeah, it's the best, and I, I it's one of my staples. Yeah, you know. People say milk, bread, eggs. Well, it's got enough cheese on it that you get your dairy. You know, oh, your daily allowance of dairy. Yeah. And, you know, it's got the crust. There's your bread. And uh, as far as eggs, I just have a couple of those usually after my oatmeal in the morning. So <laughs> it's all mixed covered, in, man. Mixed in your beer. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, mix in an egg with a beer. Although this morning, here's a funny story. Uh, I woke up about a half an hour ago, and here it is almost noon. And uh, I woke up and I made my bowl of oatmeal and I made a uh, cup of coffee and I poured coffee mate in my oatmeal and water in my coffee. Mm. Well, the water in the and coffee you know, is not so bad. Turned out not but, bad. Yeah, yeah. It turned out not bad. Yeah, because you know the yeah, oatmeal was was fine. I always I always add a little milk with my oatmeal coffee, anyway. You know? Yeah, I always yeah. You know, a little cream, a little sugar. Yep. Yeah, that always yeah. helps the diabetes too. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, I'm pretty well set here. I mean, well, my life hasn't changed a whole lot since uh, mid-March, you know, when right. uh, everything started to get locked down other than, you know, I don't do trivia anymore because the restaurants and bars are still closed up. Right. Um, yeah, because but, you, you were always one to do that, too. You are to be out in the public and everything and do all this stuff. Now you, you really can't do that. There's no gatherings, so to speak, so... So yeah, uh, that was part of my, uh, you know, part of my routine. That was something I looked forward to, and now it's just not there. And it's kind of, it's kind of different, you know. I mean, it's it's a different feeling for sure. Yeah, with all that's going on, um, you know, I get I love the dirty looks I get when I go to the grocery store, and um, I mean that's just usual that's typical for a guy with a face for radio they're gonna sneer at you like you know you're the elephant man but so i've kind of come accustomed to that yeah but uh you know when you look like the elephant man with a face for radio and you're not wearing a face mask and you walk into walmart they give you some dirty looks (laughs) Uh, i never thought about that yeah 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 they sneer you know and can't believe you're out in public without a face mask. Where's your face mask? Well, how can you tell I'm they're like, sneering oh, if I... they're wearing face masks, though? Well, just their eyes. Oh, you can okay. see it in their eyes. You know, they, they, they get, their eyes get real squinty, you know, like, ooh, you're not wearing a face mask. Yeah. How, how come you're not, you don't wear one? Is there a reason? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there is a reason. Okay. You want to hear it? Yeah, sure, sure. Because a virus is a virus is a virus, and your body is made up of millions of cells, and your body itself is a virus. You know, your body is full of all kinds of bacteria, good and bad. Yeah. And as an organism, as a giant organism made up of millions of cells, your body builds up an immune system by fighting the bad bacteria with good bacteria and in order to build up that immune system you need to be exposed to the bad bacteria and the only way you can get exposed to the bad bacteria is if you come in contact with it so if you're sitting home and you're sanitizing everything and you're not going out getting exposed to the antigens and the bad bacteria then your immune system is going to be depleted And when your immune system is depleted, you're more susceptible to infection. So that eventually when you do go out, you're going to be more susceptible to the infection and end up getting sick. May not be COVID-19, may just be the flu or may just be your allergies and overdrive, but your body's going to be more susceptible to infection. Therefore, I don't wear a mask. Okay. So that I get those antigens, get those antibodies in me, get the bad stuff in me so my body can build up immunity. I'll never do a mass vaccination. I've never done a vaccination. I've never been vaccinated. Maybe as a child for chicken pox or something like that. 
but I won't do the vaccination. I won't do the mask and everyone else can live their life as free as they want. But I choose freedom over fear. And that's just my thought, just my belief. You can agree or disagree. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to live my life without fear as I choose. And if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But I'm not going to worry about getting it. Yeah, I'm not I, going I understand that. You can't, like I say, especially now with the, with everybody that's been going on as long as it has, everybody's just getting sick of not being, not living, you know, basically. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm not going but you, to. But you are diabetic too. I mean, that's one of the one of the things they say it has a harder time fighting off this corona uh, virus yeah. is because of the uh, being diabetic or heart conditions or whatever. You know, if you have a compromised immune system, you're more susceptible to the infection. Which okay, I'm more susceptible, so I'm going to wash my hands regularly, maybe a little more so than I would normally. Okay, uh, I'm going to use something to, you know, c- protect myself, protect my hands. What I'm not going to walk around with, you know, latex gloves all the time, but I might use my shirt sleeve to grab a door handle instead of my bare hand, you know. Yeah. Just so I don't come in direct contact with somebody else's germs. Yeah. So I am, I am preventative. I'm doing pre- things to protect myself that I wouldn't normally do. Right. But then right. again, I'm not going to. Yeah, but the, but the what the one thing the one thing that I want to say that you know like I said you you have the right to do what you want to do but wearing the mask to me is protecting everybody else. So just in case you have the virus or you have something that you could spread. If you wear the mask, you aren't spreading it to others. Well, the only way you can spread it to others is if you were to sneeze on them or in their vicinity. Yeah. I mean, if if it's inside of you and you expel it into the air, then, yeah, they could get infected. If they're walking within six feet of you and you sneeze or you cough or, you know, God forbid you should spit – if, if you put it into the air within six feet of them, then yeah, there's a possibility they could get, be infected. But I'm not going to sneeze around anybody. And if I do have to sneeze, I'll tuck my nose in my shirt. I, and I, I I'd hate to wash your shirts, man. It. Huh? <laughs> I'd hate to wash your shirts. Why? It's just <laughs> Why? not. It's just not. <laughs> See, that's the problem true. I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, being serious, you know, now that we're on the serious topic, um, the problem I have is th- I'm the, the fear mongering. Okay. Yeah. And there's no better explanation yeah. for it. And people say, well, it's to protect everyone else. We wear a mask to protect everyone else. All right. So why haven't you been, I mean, the Chinese been wearing masks for years. So why haven't we? Right. Well, because there's never been a, a, a virus like this. Are you kidding me? This is just a new strain of something that's been around since the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu was a coronavirus. COVID-19 is a coronavirus. And in its very name, it is coronavirus 19, 19 because it was created in 2019 yeah that's how it got its name yep. and so for people to panic and be afraid they're just allowing themselves to be afraid what happened what happened okay not never mind Oh, okay. My alarm went off. Usually I'm waking up right about this time. (laughs) No, I just, I feel like it's not necessary. I feel the mask is not necessary. I mean, when when they were saying two months ago that, yeah, you can wear a mask, but you don't really, it won't really do any good. And then two months later, they're saying, well, yeah, a mask is a good idea now that we have enough for everyone. I can't find any N95 masks anywhere. No, I haven't either. No. 
And I'll be honest with you, I did wear a handkerchief, and I carry a handkerchief with me. You know, I carry a handkerchief, a pocket knife, and a handgun, because those are things a guy can use. But staying on the subject, I just don't feel it's necessary to protect you or me. And here's why. If you have the virus inside you and you're wearing a mask, that virus cannot leave your body. On your shirt sleeve or on your shirt or on a, a tissue paper or, you know, whatever you use to blow your nose. So it'll stay inside you. Your bodily naturally expels bad things, which is why you cough which is why you sneeze, because those sensors are stimulated to eject whatever is irritating it, whether it's a scratchy, dry throat or, you know, pollen in your nose. Yeah. That's just, that's your body's natural reaction. It's like cough, sneeze, get rid of it, get it out of here. You know, we're dealing with other stuff, but I mean, that's, that's just my belief, and people call me, you know, crazy, but so far, so good. I mean, I live such a reclusive lifestyle, I rarely come into contact with anyone. Right, right. Yeah, well, I, yeah, don't even, I don't even go to the grocery store because you can, did you know this? I just found this out the other day. You can go online, order all your groceries, and someone will bring them to your door. Yeah, yeah. You don't even see them. And then they send you a text message. Your groceries are outside your door. That's the greatest thing to me since sliced bread. I know. Well, so I don't this, even have to what, come into contact. Once with this them. is over, we can do that now anyway, because I like, I like staying in my house also. So there you go. Just do everything. I, I'm, you know, I'm getting so excited with, uh, with doing uh, uh, Amazon as far as ordering everything I need to order and all that good stuff. I mean, I don't need to go anywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm anything I need, I can order online. Yeah. I just ordered shoes the other day. Yeah. I just ordered some more mic stands from my, my, in, my outside, uh, <laughs> my outside studio. So your it's, outside studio that nobody's coming to. Yeah, no one, no one's coming to. Yeah. Well, so afraid to I mean, come. If you, yeah. Yep. And, and so, I mean, people can, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't adhere to the guidelines but they keep changing the rules oscar yeah i know yeah the 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 world health organization the cdc you know this this um this covid uh, panel of uh you know all these experts you know and then all their their estimates are way off base you know they overestimated the number of infections and the number of deaths so what good is that research? And everybody's saying, well, we'll follow the we'll follow the science. Well, the scientists can't even predict it. No. Their predictions are way off. So you're gonna believe the science when it isn't even close to the actual uh, result? I'm not going to. I'm the type of person where I'm just gonna wait and see what happens. I'll yeah. prepare for it. I'm a Boy Scout. And our mantra was be prepared. So I'm prepared. I'm stocked up on all my vitamins and my anti-inflammatories and, you know, my immune, immune system. Did I say immune? Yeah, you did. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about the rocket launch today at 2 o'clock. <laughs> That's I'm right. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching it on my phone. It's really cool that I can watch it on my phone. So, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, on that topic... I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And if I get sick, well, then I'll call my doctor and ask my doctor, what should I do? Yeah. Well, the doctors are afraid to go in the, into their offices. They're all doing virtual yeah. checkings anyway. Sure. So, sure. I mean, what are your here our, poor, what? our poor nurses are out there fighting everything, but our doctors are hiding behind, behind, uh, behind their yeah, virtual. Yeah, they don't have time for that nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking your temperature. Just tell me what how you feel. How do you feel, Oscar? Yeah, tell me how you, you have feel. Have a scratchy huh? throat. You when you a... breathe in, does it sound like you're popping a a big sheet of bubble pops? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. When you were a kid, you get that packing material, and it sounded like a machine gun. Is that what it sounds like when you 
breathe in air, then yeah, you might want to go to the emergency room. <laughs> so the nurses can take care of you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So the ones that have to deal with you can deal right, with you. Right. Those poor people. Yeah. I know a few nurses. Oh, I do too. I know one of, several one of them was my daughter. The so yeah, field. yeah. Yeah. And it's like, wow, man, that's, about that's all the time. scary. That's scary. Yeah, it is. But so, I don't yeah. come into contact enough with people to wear a face mask, Oscar. So that's why I don't. Yeah. You know, I had. Uh, and if people freak out, if I'm at the gas station, you know, if, I don't even own a car. So why would I be at the gas station? I'll tell you why. <laughs> they have great breakfast sandwiches at the gas station up here. Okay. Anyway, like the West Coast now, see, or it something? It all goes back to food. What? Like the Westcos or something? Because I always get their, their wrapped onions or whatever they're called. Yeah, those are good. Yeah. I usually go to the Barney Castle right down the street from the radio station and grab myself a breakfast sandwich in the morning with a cup of coffee. It's a routine thing, you know. Yeah. So any stalkers out there, that's my routine. <laughs> breakfast sandwich at Barney Castle and a cup of coffee. Yeah. That's how you'll get me. You that, or you can catch the boat over at uh, the uh, the chuck wagon on Wednesday. So there you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, they're only doing takeout and delivery now, so yeah, I'll only yeah. be there for a couple well, of minutes. It's not like you can sit in the I'm place anyway. Feet. There's like what, maybe four stools there, or four places to sit. I don't know. It's not very big, so it's limited seating. Yeah. I'd say thirty people. Yeah, yeah, They'll maybe seat thirty people comfortably. But you know that it's a small place with big ovens. Yep. And the best pizza I've ever had. That's right. And I've well, had pizza from around the world. Yeah, yeah. When you know, when you figure you've got uh, maybe three inches worth of stuff piled on top of this pizza, That's I mean, it, come on. Man. Yeah. How, how you can you possibly eat beat that? You have to eat a slice of pizza with with two hands or a shovel. A shovel. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. I yep. think I think we should become the spokespeople for chuck wagon but they don't really need us because they're busy all the time so you know they're very they're very generous when it comes to charitable organizations and i figure you and i qualify for charitable organizations <laughs> there you go so maybe we could work a deal out where they just you know give us a couple of pies a month and, you know and uh we'll just talk about them on the on the talking tune show. Yeah, that'll work. And you know, and when you, when we get people to actually you can come check here in a couple of times a month with me and I'll let you know what's happening up north and if if, if we so get people Do you guys to... actually talk about music on this show or do you just talk about whatever? Yeah, whatever. 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 Usually yeah. we talk about uh, uh, interesting things besides COVID, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Not much okay. else you can talk about these days. So well, I picked up a new hobby recently, playing the bass. Yeah, I and saw I'm that on Facebook. I'm trying to teach myself. <clears throat> so, but I broke it. It doesn't work right now. So I have to, once the music store opens up, I have to take it down to the music shop here in town and have them take a look at it. Yeah. It you know, probably just needs a wire reconnected or something. I don't know. You know, I... Re I uh... You always tell, you know, Facebook Carter Moore, he knows everything about guitars and basses and everything. You can always ask oh, him. Oh, yeah. Um, There's a blast from the past. Oh, yeah, Carter. Yeah, like I used to do a show for Carter when he was with, on TV40. He did his own more music show. That was that was yeah. a lot of fun. But, yeah, anyway, when I was a kid, I used to play the bass. Well, I used to attempt to play the bass. That was one of my oh. things, too, when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I did a mean uh, Louie Louie. And, uh, you know, I could do that pretty well until my dad, you know, beat on the, on the walls and told me to shut up. But, you know, that was, that was <laughs> I, I did get that down pretty good, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, it would be nice to get a couple of musicians here too at the uh, outside studio so we could uh, have them play some music and I got the cameras here I and everything. Them. So, you know, we could videotape and put them up on YouTube and Facebook and that would be a, a, a fun thing. So when you get, uh. You get that bass down, you can come here and play a couple tunes on the bass. What do you think? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm all for it. All right. Yeah, well, but, you know, that's what we need to do is we need to get uh, uh, Chuck Wagon in uh, part of the whole thing, and then we'll get the get them to send a pie up here to to Whitehall, and we'll do it right here in the, in my outside studio where I'll have lunch and, and chat on talking tunes. That sounds like a great idea. 
Yeah, I just got to. I guess got to stop this truck traffic though. It's too loud. <laughs> Other than that, we'll figure something out. So, get one of them signs that says "No trucks" and just stick it down at the end of the road. Yeah, that'll work. No trucks allowed on you this know, road. And they'll see that and they'll go, "Oh, geez, we can't drive this way." <laughs> go to you Benson, know? one road over, you'd be good. So. Yeah. But anyway, this is kind of like your, you, you know, if you stopped over here, it's kind of like your home away from home, too. It's the one of the first radio stations you worked at, We, you know, right next door, you know, even though the station isn't actually there anymore. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's, you're yeah. over in that neck of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Right next door is my the tower. Cool. We could cool. break in sometime and broadcast from there. Nobody would hear know, us, that, but. That might be fun. I think just the AM. I'd like to see is what, right it, what it looks like. Well, it's just it's it's like a just a tower or just a uh, transmitter um, shed now. Oh yeah. Yeah, they got rid of the whole the whole studio, and it's funny because I was talking to Don Anderson, who used to work at TRU back in the '60s, and that was his first station he worked at was over there, and uh, um, he said that he went in there before they tore it down. And, uh, you know, it's been called so many names, I don't even know what to call it anymore. But um, he said he went in there before they tore it down, and in the sales office there was still stuff in there carved on the walls from back when he would used to work there, you know, 40 wow. years ago. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So That's it's kind wild. of a, kind of a shame because there was a lot of, lot of good memories there. I mean, a lot of us started there. I mean, you started there. A lot was, of yeah, a lot of radio there. history in that building. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, LT started over there, didn't he? Wasn't he there? He started. Um, uh, I know John John Allen. That's where he started. Uh, just a lot of great, you know, a lot of great people that got into radio started over there. So shame to see the yeah. whole building tore down. They should preserve it as a, you know, make it a national historic monument. Or they could have, they could have donated the stuff because, like I say, remember the old, I think it was the old turn turn pot board that was in there. Yep. Yeah, they could have yeah. the, the on, on the AM side. Yeah, the the horseshoe, um, you know, desk they had there for the turn and the two turntables and everything else. I don't know if that stuff was all there when you were there or not. It was there when I was there, thirty five years ago. We had a couple turntables and, you know, a couple of CD players. And I worked there in the early 90s, yeah. early to mid 90s. So that was early 80s. So, yeah. It was, it was but, during that transitional phase when, when CDs were real popular. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, still, we did still play 45s and albums. You know, we yeah. had the music library we had there for the country station was just phenomenal due to the fact that the the general manager of the place yeah, was Ron. yeah he was a he was a country artist mm -hmm. back in the day and he had a lot of friends in the music business oh, yeah. and he had a lot of contacts and we had everything you could imagine from you know country music not to mention was, the nicest guy ever. I mean, you know, the thing about it, people, oh yeah, he got Absolutely. a he got a bad name in the community. I think for a lot of times for because he just you know that station was kind of a, just a small AM station before before you came along with just a little AM station that didn't really reach much of anywhere. You know, so yeah, uh, he he, had, he did a lot of wheeling and dealing to try to make the station money. Well, he was just good. At, he was good. He was a good sales guy too. You know, so sure. And then every time when you yeah, when you're saying sales, work. they call you <laughs> they call you a crook, no matter what you do. So it was a fun place to work for sure. Yeah, I he let it. he let you do just about. That was thing about Jay Ron. He let you do just about anything you wanted, just about anything. So <laughs> you know that, and and it's funny you should say that because that's kind of the situation I'm in right now. I have a lot of freedom where I work right now, you know, mm -hmm. and. Due to everything that's going on, my you know my hours have been reduced. But other than that, the freedom just to play whatever I want to play, right. you know. And the nice thing about that is when someone calls in a request or hits me up on Facebook or you know whatever, and they want to hear something that's you know not a common record, not uh, you know wasn't a hit, I can usually you know play that play it for them, right? You know. Depending on my mood, if I feel like, you know, downloading it off the, you know, Spotify or Amazon or whatever the thing we use is, 
I can, and I like that freedom. That it's nice, you know, with a smaller station when you're not a corporate station, right? And don't have to adhere to all the specifications that they have, you know, of their format, their playlist. You got to play these 300 songs, and that's it. It's nice to have the freedom to go outside of that stale realm of repet- repetitiveness. You know the right. the it just it's it makes it so much better for the person behind the microphone doing it right and which that, we're few it, and far between now well yeah because then that's the way real radio started like i say <clears throat> i don't know if you know who don anderson is but like I say, he started over at wtru when he was a kid and he's he's in his 70s now so that was kind of the way that he did it same with paul when he was at uh, in new york a friend of mine they, you know, at uh, a big station where like Wolfman Jack was at, and you know, Tom Shannon, you know, in, in New York, and and that's what they did. They basically picked their own music, what they wanted to play. They said pretty much what they wanted to say, and you know, that's not that's not something you hear anymore on radio. So and let you know the corporate the corporate stations lay like maybe serious radio with Howard Stern. You know, that's about as close as you're going to get to that. So. And he yeah. didn't play music yeah. anymore. So, anyway, yeah, I, it's 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 a it's a sad uh, art that's uh, been lost. I think to a, to a lot of a lot of different areas. I mean, grow, growing up listening to it on the radio when I was a kid was uh, you know it was that, that same with you is like that's what I want to do when I grow up. You know, yeah, so. yeah. I'm trying right now. I'm trying to get like I was telling you before. I'm um, trying to get uh, all the old Sunny FM crew to come over here too and, and do a little thing. I talked to Jeannie Vollmer. He used to be the uh, well. You probably remember Jeannie because you were over at uh, Rock 101.7 too at that time, weren't you? When, when uh, Sunny was over there. Anyway, she was part of the promotions department. Yeah. She was part of the promotions department. You got all the promotions going and stuff like that. So try to get a hold of her. Sweet Lou Mitchell. We got, uh, you know, JoJo Biggins, uh, Mark Frost, all those people trying to get them all. Ranger Bob. It'd be nice to get them all together and uh, have like a reminiscing show of just the, the all those guys from Sunny FM days too, you know. You know what? That they, was some fun stuff. Back in the day, they used to have a little get-together. Yeah. And... Uh, they used to have a little get together in Grand Haven every summer or every other summer or something. <laughs> and, and the funny thing about that is, uh, they had a, the group, they had a name for the group. I don't know if I should tell, say it or not. I mean, it's, it's all history anyway, but it was, uh, the Bob Goodrich fan club. Okay. And it was anybody that, that had worked for Bob in the past was invited to this get together and they just they like you said they they get together at a bar and, and just sit around and enjoy some cocktails and tell some stories and have some laughs and um I don't think they do that anymore since the station is has long been gone but you know yeah well it, that's, that's it's, not it's even just something you could something it it'd be a good question to ask that group of what's the what you know, what are some of your uh, Bob Goodrich fan club stories you can tell? <laughs> but it's it's one of those things that nobody ever mentioned it publicly, so maybe they won't. You yeah, know, they might not. It's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Like to... the secret society, you don't talk. You know, it's like Fight Club. The first thing you don't do is don't talk about Fight Club. Well, the first thing you don't do is that, talk about the fan club. That's kind of that's kind of radio though too. A lot of the stories you you'd be afraid to tell or you couldn't tell because you get people in trouble for it, but you know, yeah, or pe- or people would just say, that's, that's crazy. You yeah. made that up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I have a friend that I worked with in radio years ago that I was just talking to last week. We were reminiscing about some of the things we did while we were in radio, both as, you know, like part of the radio station, promotions mm-hmm. you know going to concerts going backstage and some of the some of the stuff that happened backstage at some of the concerts you really can't mention because you know it's just nobody would believe it first off and and, and secondly you may be held uh, accountable you know right, right for some of the shenanigans that that went on backstage back in the day but 
You know, I, yeah, I always, those are some interesting stories, just yeah. not for broadcast. <laughs> That's what I always say. I say I would, you know, I've been in radio for a lot of years. I've never, I've never made it big as far as getting rich, but I got, I'm, I'm rich with memories. I can tell you that much. That's for sure. Plenty of yeah. memories. Good oh, yeah. memories. Absolutely. Yeah. Radio or, never made me rich, but it gave me, it gave me plenty of me- great memories. Yeah. You know, yeah. just. I can the, the stuff that normal people would not it. would not believe you did. <laughs> oh yeah, but back then, you know, we would do anything. Oh yeah, for for the ratings, for yeah. you know, to promote the radio station, and the crazier it was, a lot of times, the crazier the the idea was, the more we wanted to do it just to see if we could pull it off. Right. Right. There were a lot of things that fell flat on their face, you know, and didn't didn't even leave the the conference room. But there were some things that we pulled off that just people are just amazed, you know, like getting backstage to see Hootie and the Blowfish without, you know, backstage passes, sneaking into concerts, um, you know, uh, just doing stuff that was pretty much considered guerrilla radio, but you know, we were the, we were the, the small fish in a large pond, so to speak. So anytime we'd go to Grand Rapids to promote something, we would have to result to guerrilla radio tactics right? and just, you know, put our banners up over the other stations, banners, you know, and just and make our presence known and just that's it. And whatever the cost that was the cost. Well, it always helped with a little press pass. People thought you were somebody when you had that little press pass, too, you know. Oh, sure. That was a badge of honor. Yeah, you know, hey, yeah. look, I got the backstage pass. I'm from the <laughs> radio station. la di da Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't like doing that. I usually kept mine in my pocket until somebody asked for it. You know, like, hey, you can't come back here unless you have a pass. And then I'd pull it out of my pocket and flash it real quick and then. Because I didn't want to seem, I didn't want to be one of those pretentious, you know, oh, a holes that, you that saw, are known for the business. <laughs> yeah, you've always you always seen those ones over at the uh, summer celebration that would have like the the little hook thing around their neck and have like fifty different passes on it from years before and all that stuff. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah like, oh, so. I've been to this show. I was at this show. <laughs> I was at this show. Who cares? You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I still remember the first time, the first band I ever, ever introduced, though, that was still one of my favorite things to remember, just because I was just starting out on radio, and, and, you know, it was very cool at that time. You know, then after that, it just kind of got to be not a big deal, but the first one was yeah. always the best. Yeah. You remember your yeah. first introdu- introduction? What was that? Um, boy, I want to say it was... Um... Geez, oh, Pete's probably uh, mid '90s. Elsie Walker Arena. Um, probably the I don't know. I have a photograph of it somewhere of me on stage, and right behind me is my buddy Andy O'Reilly back when he worked in Grand Rapids at KLQ. Okay. And we were kind of cross promoting the radio, the 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 show. And I think it was Cinderella and uh, a couple other rock bands that were out on tour, and they played the they played the LC Walker Arena. And uh, the 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 promotions person I worked with at the radio station said, "You get to represent the radio station, and you get to go up on stage and you know welcome everybody." And then, uh, but uh, another guy is going to be there from another radio station. A guy named Andy is going to be there from. KLQ and uh, you know you're going to have to share the the spotlight with him and I'm like well I listen to him on the radio he sounds pretty cool that'll be fun so yeah uh, and that was the first time I ever got up on stage to introduce or to say hi to everybody we really didn't introduce the band you know because they would yeah, yeah. they would have a, an intro <laughs> that they would play so we'd go up welcome everybody say hi and uh, to this day uh, Andy was blown away by that because I got up on stage. I was a huge fan of his radio show. He did a, a Saturday night uh, um, metal show, basically, that I loved because I'm a fan of the genre. 
And so I was a fan of his. He really didn't know who the hell I was, you know, the pissant from the Lakeshore Rock Station. <laughs> but I got up and I welcomed everybody. And I, I was like his hype man. I was just, I was so excited that he was there because I was a fan of his and I loved listening to him on the radio shows that he did. And so I was like his hype man without even knowing it. You know, I was a fanboy basically, you know, like, give it up for Andy O'Reilly from Calcoon. And the crowd went nuts, you know, because he was pretty popular at the time. And uh, he's like, man, I'll never forget that. You were just up there and all you were doing was just pumping me up, pumping me up, pumping me up. And uh, Andy and I have been friends ever since. Yeah. And we worked together for for a, a couple of years yeah. at, uh, at at the radio station there in Muskegon. Um, and we're still friends to this day. You know, he's one of the he's one of the good people in the business that w- is just has a huge heart, honest, and wouldn't try to screw you over if they pay, if they paid him a million dollars. Um, he's a he's a good, honest person. Got a great heart, and I just love the fact that he's been doing what he's been doing for so long for the 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 community in which he lives. Yeah. Which is he, he far def- more than I could loves, ever do. Definitely loves Muskegon. No doubt about it. You know, and, yep. and he's been doing everything in his power to promote positivity in that area. Right. And, you know, God love him for it. And uh, like I said, we're still fans to this day, but that was probably the first time I ever got up on stage. And I have, like I said, I have a photograph of it somewhere of me standing up on stage and Andy's just behind me. And, uh, yeah, so that's probably to answer your question. The first time I got up, the 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 most memorable time, other than that, was probably summer celebration, twenty five, thirty five thousand people, whatever it was, and uh, I think it was the Poison show when uh, Poison played there uh, for the first time. And I got up on stage and. and just looked out and there's a sea of people right as far as you can see you know just people as far as you can see and there's something about that oscar that just you feel like and granted probably you know 90 percent of those people didn't even hear what you were saying right right you know because they're doing other things among amongst you know the drinking and the and and just having a great time and so, but to be up there and have a microphone and be talking to those people, it just kind of made you feel like you were, you know, uh, 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Yeah. Well, you know, the, speaking of that, that was the first thing I said. I introduced, it was back in, uh, that was before summer celebration. It was during about a lumber fest or whatever they used to call it before that. Uh, the Lumbertown Music Festival. Music Fest. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. introducing Three Dog Night. And, um, that was the first thing I said, even though up there and, you know, it was in the big park area, there's people sitting on the ground and everything else, you know, and, and I got up there and the first thing I said was, man, now I know what it feels like to be in Woodstock, <laughs> <laughs> even though it wasn't even close, yeah. but it did feel, feel right. pretty cool. Though you saw all these people out there, you know, you didn't know it wasn't, it was kind of like uh wow. What, what do I say now? <laughs> yeah. Right. But it, it's yeah, very cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So I say people, I mean, radio, I guess there's way too many memories to, to worry about uh, not being a millionaire. That's for sure. I know I, I, I would not trade it for, uh, for anything. But you know, yeah. I mean, the memories are priceless. Right. Really. You know, you can't put a dollar value on, on the experiences we've had. Right. You know, and that's the reason why I'm trying to do that, the legends videos too. It's, I mean, I know that you can't really put, Within an hour, put everything you know you've done and accomplished in the in the in the oh, uh, no. in an hour. You know, but geez, just mean, to let people know that hey, you know, we had some pretty good times back then that people might yeah. not know about. So yeah, and and a lot of the stories you know uh, are are just too too uh, you know uh, unbelievable. Uh, they're just they're they're just so out there, just so crazy, and just. What were you guys thinking? Well, we were just trying to have a good time, you know, yeah, and promote yeah. the radio station. And they're, they're they're just so 
so far fetched. They're they're unbelievable, but you know, sitting around with a few friends over a couple of beers or whatever, or a cup of coffee or whatever, and is like, I can't believe you guys actually did that. That actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> It actually did. The like, only reason I know is because I was there. Yeah, you know, there, there's a there is a there is a couch at Rock ninety five. Yeah, and the building over here in Whitehall, and uh, yeah, it was in the back room. And if that couch could talk, <laughs> <laughs> right? There was yeah. way too many stories about what happened on that couch that uh, I never even wanted to go near that couch. But anyway, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, good times. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, hey, I appreciate um, you spending uh, spending the afternoon here with me. I, you know, wanted yeah, to chat man, with you. Yeah, man, anytime, Oscar. Just wanted to chat with you, and, you know, that's one thing about you and I. We, the, the two of us know how to talk, that's for sure, so. Yeah, you know, we could go on and on. I mean, this, you know, this could be a, this could be a, a podcast. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Well, it, it it will be on YouTube, so there you go. Hopefully, sometime, hopefully someday it will be a podcast, and we'll make Joe Rogan money. There you go. <laughs> That'd be nice. You know. <laughs> yeah, then we can retire. Yeah. Well, hey, I'll work on this outdoor studio here, so if I can d- nub, dumb, numb the noise down a little bit with all the trucks going by. But other than that, you know, hey, we'll have some fun out here anyway. So I like the ambiance. It reminds me of uh, being a over the road trucker. Yeah, well, it's kind of like doing. It's a like lar- we're sitting in a truck stop waiting for. Never mind. <laughs> or li- doing live remotes. I mean, you remember the live remotes? Like you we're, never. We're, you never could it's control like we're this. Sitting in a tr- it's like we're now. I got to change the inflection of my voice so I'm not taken seriously. See, that's that's one of the secrets of telling a good story on the radio. You got you change the inflection of your voice so they know you're not being serious. So it, it it reminds me, Oscar, it reminds me of sitting in the truck stop waiting for the hookers to show up. <laughs> I've never had that experience, so you have to tell me about that sometime. Neither have I. I just made that up. <laughs> okay, See, that's good, the whole good. theater of the mind. Okay. <laughs> There's a little, that's just a, that's just a, a, a small example of how we paint a picture with words. That's right. That's right. And you were, you're one of the masters. <laughs> Whether it's true or not. That you know, why let the truth ruin a perfectly good story? That's right. It doesn't have to be truth. It can be science fiction, right? And, and that's that's kind of radio right there. You don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You paint your Make own it picture. Up as you go along. Yeah, yeah. I've been making it up for thirty-five years, and so <laughs> far it's uh, it's been all right. Yeah. Well, it looks like the uh, maintenance guys having an issue with his lawnmower so i'm gonna go down there and see if i can help him yeah you know i while while we were talking to i actually got to see a a little turtle walk across my driveway (laughs) oh isn't that nice that's That's sweet i was just hoping that my dog didn't get it but anyway you know oh yeah yeah okay all right man (laughs) thanks a lot it's always good talking to you oscar all right same talk to you again soon all right bye-bye right on brother bye